If nobody is buying what you're selling, chances are you don't have the right position in the marketplace. So what's going on guys? It's Josiah, your success strategist. And today I wanna give you the top four ways to start getting sales because right now nobody is buying what you're selling. Why is nobody buying what you're selling? Now I could have started this video off super hard and I could have said it's because your product sucks. But I'm not going to do that because I want you to subscribe. So make sure you subscribe to this channel and I'm going to give you the real top four reasons why your product isn't selling. The first reason why your product is not selling is because you're not marketing your competitive advantage. I want to make a basic assumption right now that you are selling a product or service that somebody else is also selling. You have competitors in the marketplace. And even if there is some area of innovation in your business on something that you're doing just a little bit differently than everybody else, there's still a overall market for the game that you're in, right? So you could be in the shipping business and you're gonna be competing with FedEx, UPS, DHL, you could be in the fast food game and you could be competing with McDonald's or Burger King. And even though these different business owners and corporations have different ways of distributing their products and their services, there's something about every competitive business that comes with a competitive advantage. See, you got to have that competitive advantage. You know, one of the things I always talk to um to my clients about is understanding how to take one tiny area of your business and dramatizing it to the point where you get a lot of paying customers who want that one specific thing that you have to offer. I want you to think about your favorite toothpaste right now. It could be Crest, it could be Colgate, it could be AIM, it could be Arm & Hammer, you name it. It could be Tom's. I want you to think about why it is that on every box of toothpaste, all of them are promoting one key thing about their business that helps them stand out from every other toothpaste competitor. So if you go to one toothpaste box, it might say fights cavities. You go to another toothpaste, toothpaste box, it'll talk about how it has such great taste. You go to a toothpaste manufacturer like Tom's and their number one thing that drives a lot of customers is the fact that there's no fluoride in their toothpaste for people who don't want toothpaste poison in their toothpaste, right? You've got to be able to take one set thing and really be able to drive home the point rather than just saying, I sell toothpaste. If all of these different toothpaste brands were competing one against another and they're just saying, hey, I make toothpaste. No, I make toothpaste. How does any customer or any prospect understand the difference between the two? All the customers and prospects are going to be basing a decision in large part around, well, what is the difference from one to the other? So if you have one group of people that has, you know, a lot of issues with maybe cavities, they went to the dentist, they didn't do good when it came to that dental check, then they're going to say, okay, you need to get Crest or you need to get Colgate. And then you have some other people who might be a little bit more on the natural remedy, health-based type thing. And they're going to say, okay, I don't want anything with fluoride in it. I want to be able to get the most natural remedies. So they may go with Tom's or they may just go and in looking into how to be able to have a natural type of toothpaste without a lot of chemicals. Whole case in point, in your product, you have to take one component out of a larger product and you have to really be able to drill down and hone in on that. You know, when I started Black Men's Career and I came out with my very first flagship program known as Your Breakthrough Year, 
One of the competitive advantages that really helped me stand out to grow my business was the fact that I was working with clients every single week at a very intimate level. I would be involved on these weekly mentor calls, doing group coaching. You would be able to speak with me live face to face. I still do that now in a very closed circle of clients. And that helped me stand out from a lot of other online competitors who only come out with information-based courses where you pay to get into their program, but you never see them. You got questions, they're never around to answer it. So I had a competitive advantage because I was always willing to help step by step. When it comes to what it is that you're doing, you've got to find out what your competitive advantage is. What makes what you do different from everybody else? Number two, you've got to pick your area. So now that you've identified what your competitive advantage is, you need to be very clear on, are you going to be in the quality game? Are you going to be in the price game? Or are you going to be in the convenience game? You know, a lot of startup entrepreneurs are not familiar with this concept at all. But if you think about every major business and every major corporation in America today that is doing something that's worthy of talking about, all of them understand what I'm about to say. When you look at a Walmart, their objective is low prices. They've built their entire business around being a very low cost competitor. You cannot go to other stores and get products lower priced than what you will get at a Walmart. Not if you're driving around your local community, that's how they stay in business because they're focusing on price. But then you might go to another company like Apple or Ferrari and they're not focused on selling things cheap at all. <laughs> you go into Apple, you're gonna pay $1,000 a pop for one phone. So they're playing another game which is focused on creating the best quality products possible. And the thing that all major businesses and brands understand is that you cannot try to build your business being all things to all people. Walmart doesn't try to have the highest quality products known to man because then that's going to uh, underdo, under uh, take away from their price. Apple doesn't try to sell you a Ferrari at a bargain price because then that would take away from their quality. And then Amazon obsesses around how can I make this online experience of you getting products as convenient as possible? How do I make it so that you can buy everything in one click? If you want to be more successful in selling your products, you have to get very clear on what type of area you're in and constantly grow and develop and improve in that one area until you become best in the world. Until you become world-class in quality, you still gotta keep going. Until you become world-class in price. See, this is what every other major player is doing, and so should you. Number three, if nobody's buying what you're selling, have you identified that there's a business need behind what it is that you're selling? Or are you just kind of doing your own thing, hoping that somebody's going to go out and buy it? You know, I remember I was working with somebody a year ago and they were super ambitious as an entrepreneur. They wanted to be able to sell uh, a lot of volume in the products that they were offering. And every time I sat down and spoke with this person, I always asked them, have you taken the time to interview other people that would be your ideal customers for what it is that you're trying to sell to them. And they would always tell me, oh no, well you know, why should I have to do that? Because there's all of these other businesses that are just like mine. If they did it, so can I. If they already got a product out, why can I just put a product out and compete with them? Well, the honest truth is, businesses are a lot like an iceberg. When you're looking at any successful business, 
All you can see is what they're doing on the surface. You don't see everything that's happening behind the scenes. So those successful businesses are coming with tens of thousands of hours of research and marketing and immersion about their customers that you don't even know exists. So when you go into a business, if you're just trying to create a product out of thin air, you don't know if anybody wants it, you don't know how much people will be willing to pay for it. You don't know if it's something where you pitch it to them and they're like, oh, well, you know, that's cool, that's nice, but nobody's gonna pull their wallet out and buy from it. You have not yet established a business need. You have not yet identified if somebody is actually gonna take the time to have more express interest and if there's demand on what you have to offer. And this is one of the primary reasons why so many businesses fail. You might even come out with a product or service that identifies a good business need. But if you have not taken the time to actually study the marketplace to know who needs what you're offering the most and how to reach out to them, your product is not going to get seen. Just because you have a product that can solve something if nobody knows it exists, how are they ever gonna get it? Last but not least, what I want you to think about is maybe you're not getting the sales that you need because you're not selling to the right audience. Maybe you're trying to put ice water in Alaska <laughs> when really you need to start bringing ice water to hell. You need to start going to where, you know, people are just dying, right, uh, 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 of thirst. You need to be going out to the desert and be selling water to people that are out there rather than going to the ocean trying to sell water to whales. You need to think about, okay, with the product or the service that I've just created, does this properly match the audience that I'm looking for. And if you're not selling to the right audience, you're not going to get any sales. You could have the right product, but the wrong marketing. You could have the right product and the wrong customer base. You've got to be able to take your product, align it with the right community, and then that's when you can start seeing success. So again, if nobody is buying what it is that you're selling, and we're assuming now that you're selling something of value that doesn't suck, is because you have not yet amplified your competitive advantage, you have not picked your area of innovation, you have not validated if there's a business need for what it is that you have to offer, or you're just not selling to people in the right places because you have not yet identified your right target audience. Get those four things down and you're gonna be getting a lot more sales. And if you wanna know more about how to transition out of your nine to five job into being a full-time business owner, I'm talking you're able to make money from home, you're able to travel the world while making money. You're able to start setting up automated streams of income, passive income type businesses. If you want to know how to be able to transition out of your nine to five so that you can do that, I want you to now click the link in the bio or go to the tab above, click the link in the description, and I want you to watch this video that I put together. It has a ton of value. It's called the escape plan. This is going to be the step-by-step -step process that's gonna allow you to escape your nine to five into being your very own business owner. All the steps are laid out. A lot of you guys wanna be business owners, but you're not sure where to get started. In that video, I've outlined it step-by-step. -step. It's 100% free, and not only do you get this free video, I'm gonna be reaching out to you every week just to be able to give you that much more information that I don't share anywhere else, all right? So check out that link, leave a comment. Let me know why you feel that your business is not selling more of what you wanna sell. Is it because of the fact that you haven't yet picked a business need? Is it because of the fact that you don't uh, put your product in front of the right audience? Why is it that you are creating something that people are not buying? I want to hear your comments, and I'll see you on the next episode. Take care.